Well, hello everyone. Yes, it's me, Carl Jenny. I never post any homegrown videos on Facebook, but today I decided to. Uh, it's uh, Friday, October the 9th, 2020. It is my youngest sister Lisa's birthday, and my one of my best friends, Tom Callahan, his wife Mary's birthday, and it is also John Lennon's birthday. But uh, what I wanted to do was just to, because there's some significance to, uh, to all of this, is to show you a little bit about my man cave, but uh, because I'm a sen sentimentalist, uh, I do attach a certain sentimental value to physical objects uh, in my life. And uh, as I uh, just kind of pan with the camera here while my Samsung tablet, uh, I'm just kind of letting you see a little bit uh, of my man cave. Again, uh, this is no great production. I used to shoot video professionally, as, uh, and I was a, I'm a retired professional photographer also. So um, you'll see all kinds of things that kind of define me. Uh, in these scenes, uh, reel to reel recorders, analog reel recorders from back in the day. Uh, for example, these three uh, recorders the one on the left is a TIAC, the one on the right is a TIAC, the one in the middle is a, an Akai. These are high end, some of the top of the line stuff that was out there back then, back in the 70s and early 80s. Um, and then, of course, you'll see a, a PV 40 watt base amp that I bought at a pawn shop in like new condition. I think I paid 80 bucks or something for it a few years ago. Um, and this is an, a Hartke 150 watt amp that I got a few years ago. Uh, bigger and it's, it sounds great, you know. And of course over here is a little portable Hartke 25 watt amp with an 8 inch speaker but unbelievable the sound quality this thing has. It really delivers. So that's great for small venues or just the portability of it all. Um, and then, uh, well, back here behind my chair here, you'll see this uh, Hartke HD, or I'm sorry, KB15 500 watt portable amp with a 15 inch speaker and it's called a kickback because it'll tilt back somewhat and act as a monitor or as a standard amp for medium up to medium sized venues 500 watt pretty good and here's a, a two here are two uh, guitars a six string um, squire stratocaster which is a clone of the fender stratocaster i mean there are some differences but visually you can't really tell them apart i got i paid 64 dollars for that and on the left is a hofner bass which is the same model that uh, Paul McCartney used uh, and made famous with the Beatles. It's a German made bass, Hofner. And then Squire, which is designed by Fender, but it's like a, a very low cost kind of Fender guitar. I don't play guitar, I used to, but not very well. But it's there in case anyone else wants to use it, play around with it if they're visiting. This is kind of the crown jewel of basses. It took me two years to get it, and this is my Rickenbacker 4003S bass. Um, really, it's my go-to bass. I mean, if I had one bass I could only use, it would be this one. It, it just has a great sound. But I have some other beauties here, I think. This is a, the Dean Rhapsody 12-string bass. I did not even know that these things existed until a few months ago. 12-string bass, who ever heard of such a thing, right? On the left. And uh, my first bass ever, it's, it's valuable. It's a collector's item. It's a 1967 Hagstrom H8 8-string bass. A lot of uh, sentimentality, a lot of memories connected with this beauty. I paid $150 for it with a roughed up case back in 1977 from a friend of mine named Brian Peters who sold it to me. 
and it's now worth about five thousand dollars it's one of the first 300 made others who bought out of this batch when it was first introduced in 1967 was Jimi Hendrix and his bassist also Noel Redding for the Jimi Hendrix experience so if I could only keep one bass it would be this because you know I can't take it with me but I can at least keep it with me while I'm here and a lot of memories tied up with this thing and plus it sounds awesome alright so in a way it's kind of bragging I guess I'm just showing off a little bit here but there's a good and a, and a bad type of bragging and the good type of bragging is kind of what I did when I would set up my uh, photography booth at bridal shows to let people know that I was I felt a capable photographer and I could deliver a good product along with the other bigger studios and it was a appropriate and dignified way to brag that way you know or I might brag about some of my friends like say Jennifer uh, Manitas Condon she lives on the east uh, in New England and she uh, she is an incred incredible vocalist and a very nice person and her whole family is just wonderful and I've known Jennifer since the 90s and I, it's not like I have a, a lot of contact with her but but when I do it's always pleasant she's, she's just a sweet person and she's got tremendous talent she can sing oh man can she sing and she's actually done some recording in my humble home studio which I'm re trying to reconstitute here these are some samples of, of the hardware 32 channel Behringer board 8 channel Tascam reel to reel Tascam 38 reel to reel a lot of d digital and analog processing equipment these are tools of the trade you have to have of course you don't have to have a rifle or a replica model of the Titanic to record but they look nice <laughs> so anyway and then uh, of course other uh, items you know of my life such as amateur radio I love that and I like to, to write and this is my published novel Mayus Insomnium it's, if you type my name in or Mayus Insomnium there you can read all about it on the web I've gotten good reviews and uh, even though it's been out on the web now about 10 years lately I've been getting some sales I think it has something to do with uh, maybe the pandemic and people staying at home and reading and so uh, it, it's helped me be able to uh, you know purchase a few items uh, like like my Rickenbacker these are some little miniature guitars that I got uh, which I think are kind of neat little collectibles to have and there's so much more here I'm not going to go into, but one of the last things I wanted to show is this. Now, this is not mine, but it, it belongs to Tom Callahan. I bought it for him uh, as a 50th wedding anniversary gift. Um, uh, him and Mary, and as I said, today is Mary's birthday. Uh, and I, when I first met them, they had been married less than three years, you know, but now it's 50, and... Tom's been into music all his life, and especially gospel music, and I was also involved in him periodically off and on in gospel music. But I wanted, uh, even though I posted pictures of this, I wanted maybe if a little live video would show show it a little better. Now, I, I'm nearsighted, so I took my glasses off so I could see the tablet screen and what I'm doing. So I'll try not to bump into anything, but as long as I keep my eye on the tablet... Um, I'm okay, but this is Tom's Rickenbacker model 360 12 C63 I think It's a 12 string electric guitar and and uh, frankly, it's one of the most coveted guitars in the world uh, This was first brought to the fore by George Harrison the Beatles and you can hear it in the early Beatles work such as a hard day's night and many other songs. Uh, Tom Petty of the, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, of course, played one. And of course, Roger McGuinn of the Birds. He used it in his iconic song, Turn, 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 Mr. Tambourine Man, and, and others. And as you can see, uh, I had it taken in to Sam Ash Music and the Luthier, the guitar fixing guy, Jesse Vargas who I trust implicitly, put his hands on it, 
got it all tuned up, adjust the truss rod, intonation, uh, strung it with the right kind of strings that Tom likes, all of it, and I got it back the other day. I'm not going to play it for two reasons. Number one, it's just a lot of work to set it up right now and shoot this video. Number two, I can't play guitar very well. I used to play decent rhythm, but but uh, I, I play bass better. And, and uh, so that's the other reason. Uh, it's just a lot of work and I, uh, to, to set it up. And, and secondly, I, I don't play it very well. But yeah, I'll have some video of Tom playing it, I'm sure, someday. But isn't that beautiful? I mean, it, it really is.